good morning Macedonians and to all of our Facebook and YouTube viewers who are sharing with us on this beautiful Wednesday that the Lord has made. We say good morning to each and every one of you. We pray and hope that your day is a blessed one and that the Lord is continuing to watch over you and keep you as he always does and always has. I want you to know that we are continually in prayer for you, that the Lord will continue to sustain you even in the midst of this pandemic. For the God we serve truly is faithful and he's able and he's worthy to be praised. So we want you to know that our prayers are going up uh, for each of you, uh, even in this hour. Uh, I want to give my birthday wishes to Miss Paulette Spann, who uh, celebrated a birthday on uh, August the 10th. Also, Mark Bailey, who celebrated a birthday on Mark on the, August the 10th. And if I'm not mistaken, Nikki and Mark actually celebrated an anniversary on last month and so we say congratulations to you all as well and uh, i was made aware that uh, on april the 6th miss rosalind crone celebrated a birthday so to all of those who are, have celebrated birthdays or are celebrating birthdays we want to say happy birthday to each and every one of you may the lord continue to bless you real good and may you see many more years of your birth is always our prayer for truly every opportunity we have to see another year of our birth is truly a blessing so we say belated happy birthday to many of you, and uh, may the Lord continue to bless you to see, see many more. Today we're going to uh, Galatians, um, which is a new book for us. Um, and as we go into Galatians, I want to kind of give you a little backdrop uh, on uh, Galatia. Um, as you begin to study it, uh, there are two regions that is spoken of in Galatia, the the area or the province of Galatia, there's a north and a south uh, Galatia. Um, Paul had to uh, address many uh, believers there in Galatia uh, who were turning to false teachers. So we're going to be dealing with false teachings uh, somewhat in the book of Galatians. But Paul is just coming to reaffirm the gospel uh, to show its validity to teach it uh, and to explain that there is no other gospel um, that Christ is the only resurrected Savior uh, and that our trust should be totally in him so today as we go to Galatians and as we begin uh, this particular epistle and these letters or epistles uh, are purposed by the Apostle Paul there actually the assignment that Paul has to the churches um, that is to send them uh, words of encouragement uh, words of authority and words of instruction and so Paul is, is merely doing exactly what uh, he has been called to do and that is to reaffirm the faith of the believers of the believers and uh, help them uh, to stay from false teachers and not be fooled uh, but that they learn and stand on on the truth and the Word of God so if you would let us bow in a word of prayer today let us thank God for this opportunity we have to share in the gospel our God and our Father we thank you for this day we thank you for this opportunity we have to share in the gospel of Jesus Christ for we know that it is the power that saves us it is the power that keeps us it is the power that provides us strength day by day we ask now by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would open up our hearts to receive your word on today. Lord, that after we receive the word, our prayer is that we will be doers of your word, not just hearers. That you might receive the glory and we might receive the blessing. Watch over us and keep us as only you can. Lord, bless us now in this hour as we give you honor, glory, and praise for all things. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Amen. So for those of you that have your Bibles... Uh, go ahead and turn to Galatians, but I want to give you a backdrop uh, or an introduction to the book of Galatians, if you will. Allow me that this morning I would appreciate it, just to give you a feeling and understanding of who Paul is writing to and what the conditions are uh, in this province called uh, Galatia. Uh, the book is called Galatians. It's Paul's letter to the church there at Galatia. And so uh, if you would allow me, let me give you a little backdrop on the province of Galatia. Uh, from my studies, they said there are two prominent theories called the North Galatia theory 
and the South Galatia theory, which present differing views of the location and, and identification of these Galatian believers. The disagreement revolves around what Paul meant when he used the term Galatian. Some say that he was referring to the people living in the Roman province of Galatia, while others believe he was addressing a group of believers who were mainly of Gallic descent. Both theories have their own set of suppositions which, with respect to when the book was written, the place from which it was written, and the time periods in which other details mentioned in the book took place. The area of northern Galatia, which included the chief cities of Ancria, Tavium, and Pessinesis was conquered by the Gauls in the 3rd century BC and existed as an independent nation for about 200 years. During this period, however, the Gallic people were absorbed into the native populace there. Paul was using the term Galatian in the racial sense. He was referring to those who had descended from the Gauls in accordance with the assumption it is suggested that Paul visited this church on his second and third missionary journeys. You can see Acts 16 and 6 and Acts 18 and 23. Paul wrote this epistle from either Ephesus or Corinth during his last journey. Those who hold, that South, hold the South Galatia theory suggest that Paul used the term Galatian to refer to those who lived in the Roman province of Galatia, which is established in 25 BC, in the, and in this year, King, Ament King Amentus, excuse me, of the old kingdom and of Galatia, bequeathed his kingdom to Rome. This province covered the southern part of Central Asia Minor, and encompassed the cities in Iconium, Lystra, Antioch, Pisidia and Derby. If this theory is true, it is profitable that Paul visited these believers once on his first missionary journey, found in Acts 13, 14, and then during again his later travels. A reasonable date for the writing of the book then would be about 56 AD or 55 AD or sometime between uh, his first and second missionary journeys. According to this theory, the cities of Corinth and Antioch in Syria are the most likely places for which Paul would have written the book. Uh, just a little bit more information. Uh, it is generally accepted that Paul visited these believers twice before he wrote the epistle. During his absence, teachers came from Palestine, or Palestine called Judaizers, and insisted that these of the uh, insisted that these Gentile believers could not be true Christians until they be submitted to the Jewish ordinance of circumcision. Furthermore, they maintained that the Galatians must adhere to the law of Moses. Sound familiar? Much like the Corinthians. These naive Galatian Christians accepted that the Galatians must adhere to the law of Moses. These naive Galatians accepted their teachings just as enthusiastic as they had Paul's. The purpose of the book of Galatians is to combat the vicious heresies in which the work of Christ is considered insufficient for salvation. Ah, so uh, we're, we're getting back to what we found in the beginning of his letter to the Corinthian church. Uh, There's some Judaizers who are now in Galatia who's yet bringing up the fact that um, Gentile believers must do two things. Uh, they must uh, adhere to the law and be circumcised. So you're going to hear an argument of circumcision uh, and the law uh, again in this letter to the church at Galatia. So these are those are going to be the main things. Uh, false teachings, uh, false prophets, uh, that false teaching is primarily going to deal with, again, the law 
versus grace and also circumcision of the flesh not circ in, in uh, circumcision of the flesh and circumcision of the heart that's going to be the debate in the text so if you would if you have your bibles let us go to chapter one and begin with verse one let's read verses one through five verses one through five basically is just going to be a general greeting but let us take the opportunity to look at verses one through five while i turn this air down thank you chapter one verse one are we there it says paul an apostle not of men, neither by man, but by Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world According to the will of God our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So in Paul's introduction, uh, he authenticates his apostleship again in that he's a called apostle, not by man, but by God. He says, this is the same God who raised his son from the dead. He says this letter is written again to the church there at Galatia. But he also gives his general greeting and introduction in his letters for he uh, offers grace and peace unto the brethren there in Galatia. The peace that is from God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, this same Christ, Paul says, who gave himself for our sins. So he makes that establishment in the beginning in that the grace of God was that Jesus Christ gave uh, his life for our sins uh, that we might be delivered from this evil world the only way we can be delivered from this evil world or could have been delivered from this evil world is that Christ had to die and and be raised from the dead all those who believe in uh, this resurrection or this resurrected Christ shall receive grace from from God the Father which is his true will for our lives that we receive salvation that we receive the grace that has been afforded to us by the love of Christ through the death burial and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he says in verse 5 he deserves all the glory not only now but forever God always deserves the glory and deserves the praise in all things even in this pandemic my brothers and my sisters God deserves all the glory and he deserves all of the praise I know that some situations have been bleak there are some things that we may not understand but in the midst of COVID-19 our God is still worthy to be praised and he deserves all the praise and he deserves all of the glory because despite of this pandemic he's yet still taking care of us and we should be appreciative and thankful for that and therefore we should give him his just due in glory and in in praise verse 6 through 10 he says, I marvel that ye are not so soon removed from him that called unto you grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. There be some, there be some that trouble you and would pervert you in the gospel of Christ. Though we or an angel from heaven preach by any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have already received, let him be accursed. 
For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. Paul says it hadn't been long, just like when uh, you remember when you were small, and I can remember when we were small, I don't know about you all, but uh, couldn't wait for mom and daddy to leave the house and leave us by ourselves. We'd tear that house all to pieces while mom and daddy were gone and try to fix it back up before they get back and hope we didn't tear up nothing because if we tore up something, we knew we, we were going to get it when they got back home. Uh, that's kind of what's happened with the with the Jewish believers and the uh, Gentile believers uh, there in Galatia. Um, Paul has been away from them and uh, they've gone away from their teaching and they're doing their own thing. Uh, the text, Paul, we can, we can clearly see that uh, many had been led by a different gospel. Uh, and Paul says anyone that preaches a different gospel Anyone that follows a different gospel, he says they ought to be accursed. Um, and so Paul says, uh, be mindful, be careful, be watchful that you're not entertained or that you're not uh, convicted by a different gospel. There is but one gospel, my brothers and sisters. Paul says if there be any other gospel, it has no value or it has no effect. There is but one gospel. And that is Jesus Christ, born, living, dying, being resurrected, and yet still ascended back into heaven and still living today. That is the true gospel uh, that is spoken and is preached. Anything other than that is not the gospel. That's what Paul is trying to get them to understand. Anything else that anyone's telling you is not the gospel. The gospel is about the life the death, the burial, the resurrection and ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we do believe that he was born. We do believe that he lived according to the scriptures. We believe that he died. We believe that God the Father raised him from the dead according to the scriptures. And we believe that he ascended back into heaven and is sitting at the right hand of God right now according to to the scriptures they had gotten away from what they had been taught and I, I want to commission each of you today don't don't veer away from that which you have been taught the gospel will stand the test of time believe it for what it is God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord it was the saving power of Jesus Christ that affords us the salvation and the opportunity to be called the children of God. Paul says this in verse 10. He says, I don't do this to persuade men. He says, I do this that I might please God. And so this gospel is not about pleasing men. This gospel is about pleasing God. It's not about persuading men. It's about pleading, pleasing God. If we please God, then we are servants of God. But Paul says, if you're not pleasing of God, then you should not be called a servant of God. Mm. Mm. Verse 11. Paul says about his call and about, about his ministry. Verse 11, he says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not of man, or is not after man, for neither, for I neither received of it by man, neither was I taught of it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceeding zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with 
flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write to you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and as and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed. And they glorified God in me. To verify or certify uh, his call into ministry, he goes back and gives a little bit of his history. Listen, um, your life story will always be told. Uh, for those of us who've been converted uh, from an old way of living to a new way of living, we will forever tell our story of time past. Uh, we will always have the testimony that we once were blind, but now we're able to see. We'll be able to have the same testimony that we once were lost, but now we are found through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our history is what makes us who we are. I truly believe that God called Paul because he knew of Paul's strong convictions and Paul's faithfulness. He was so faithful to the Sanhedrins and the Romans that God knew that if he called him, he would be faithful unto him. So Paul authenticates again his apostleship um, by letting us know that this call was a call of God on his life. He says, but when he did accept the call, he did not run to the synagogue in Jerusalem, uh, but he took time and he abode uh, away from Jerusalem. In fact, uh, he took a few days and he stayed uh, uh, in Damascus. And while in Damascus, you know the story is, if you go back to the book of Acts, while in Damascus, uh, Paul is blind. In fact, he was blinded when he was knocked off his horse in the book of Acts. Uh, he, he stays there three days, but on, uh, during the course of that third day, um, God sent the prophet to remove the scales from his eyes, and he was yet able to see again. And it was at that point that uh, Paul understood and knew that he had an assignment that he had to fulfill. And he did just that. He preached um, the acceptable year of the Lord. And when the time was right, um, he had conversation after receiving his call. You know, many did not believe him because of his past and i want to share with you today my brothers and sisters your past is always going to be brought up by somebody um paul uh, strategically went to certain areas because many did not believe that he had changed uh, they only recognized him as being a persecutor of the church and not a proclaimer of the gospel and so they did not trust him Paul does end up having a uh, conversation with one of the apostles because many of the apostles feared, feared Paul because of his history. But Peter and Paul end up having conversation, end up spending time with one another, trying to reach some kind of understanding uh, to help Peter, help the other brother in his way well. And so he had stayed with him for, the Bible says, for about 15 days and then departed. Uh, there's only uh, one other um, apostle that, or one other 
the one other apostle that he actually has conversation with, and that's uh, the brother of Jesus, James, um, the author of the epistle. Uh, he has encounter with him, but you do know uh, James is should be quite understanding of Paul's conversion because uh, this particular James did not believe that Christ was the Savior until after the resurrection. Uh, same way with Paul. Paul did not believe on Christ until after the resurrection. So they have something in, in common uh, in that uh, they weren't initial followers, but now they are, they are diehard followers of Christ. Uh, all of us can have that testament that you know we haven't always been where we are right now but thanks be to god that over time uh, that relationship has grown stronger and we've built a relationship uh, by faith in our lord and savior paul had built a relationship with peter peter had built a relationship with paul paul had built a relationship with james james had established a, a relationship with paul and they all had a relationship with Jesus Christ. The common ground here today is the fact that each one of them had common ground in that they all believed in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, Paul gives also uh, a kind of excerpt of his journey, but he's also authenticating his call in that God had called him, not man. And he had a responsibility to please God and not man. He also authenticated the fact that he was the same Paul that was at one time a persecutor, but now has been converted and is now a believer and now is proclaiming the acceptable year of our Lord. God can change any of us in his own time. Be willing to accept the fact that change is imminent if we're going to grow. God can change us at any moment. I haven't always lived the life before God that I live today. But I thank God that he didn't allow me to die in my sins. But he saved me. And now I have access to him by faith. And I'm thankful for the relationship that I have in him. And I will share with you today, my brothers and sisters, as you should understand and know as well, nothing should separate you from the love of God. I don't care what it is. If God loved you and loved you enough to die for you and then be raised for you, you ought to love him back. Because no greater love than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friend. Jesus did that one day on Calvary that we may have everlasting life. The responsibility of every believer now, as Paul is saying in the text, is to spread the good news of our resurrected Savior and not be swayed by false teachers, but trusting in the Lord with all of our heart and leaning not to our own understanding, but by way of his word, obey him and acknowledge him and allow him to direct your path. My time is up today. I do hope something was said or done that would further your walk with Christ, for truly it is about our walk with him. Chapter one is merely an introduction and a brief history of Paul's life, uh, but he's going to address again, as we read our introduction today, we're going to be dealing with the law and grace uh, in the remaining chapters uh, and how grace is sufficient how grace was necessary uh, that we may be forgiven of our sins until we meet again my prayer is that you will be safe uh, that you will take care of yourselves that you would wash your hands wash your arms and avoid touching your face with your hands we want you to live long we want you to be well our prayers are always with you and for you and until we meet again my brothers and sisters Again, we hope something was said or done that would further your walk with him. Till we meet again, may God bless you and may God keep you is always our prayer.